and it's a great crowd here at Allen Fieldhouse as we are ready to get started as the Jayhawks in their white jerseys trimmed with the crimson and blue have the first possession of the game. The Wildcats in their gray jerseys on the road and it's going to be a lot of fun today, Nikki. Well, it is. You're going to see two styles of play that are very similar. But right now, Kansas is spreading the floor and taking their time. But the one thing you don't want to do in the first possession of the ball game is turn it over. Kansas State comes down the court, as I mentioned, in the open. Aoka Lee missed seven games this year after an ankle surgery early in February. She is back in. You've got the Glenn twins, Serena Sundell, and Gabby Gregory around her. Four seconds on the shot clock. Gabby Gregory short on that attempt. And as you can see here, this is the advantage that Kansas Jayhawks will have. When you have Jackson running the floor as well as she does, you've got to take advantage of your bigs getting down the floor. Sundell, such a tall point guard, spins in the paint. First basket for the Wildcats. Sundell obviously has a slight height advantage, and she was able to create a little separation there and a nice paint score for the Kansas State to get themselves on the board. Here's a look at the Kansas starting lineup. Samaya Nichols, the phenomenal freshman number 12, around all that experience. And the fourth-year senior, Wybette Mayberry, hits the three, but you've got Kurzgeer that's a fifth. So Eliza Moppin, number 21, is substituting in early for Aoka Lee. Lee still recovering. She had that ankle surgery. Then she comes back, and the first game back, she sprained her other ankle at Iowa State and then went on to play a double overtime game. So she's on limited minutes for Kansas State and already out early. You've got to understand that this is still a lot of basketball to be played, not just today, but right. the remaining part of the season. So if she's not able to go but 20, 25 minutes, and that's what you take from her, obviously you want quality minutes. Samaya so Nichols and Gabby Gregory, that is a matchup. And then that's when um, that's when Aoka Lee went out with the injury. And they're doing that through their defense. They're one of the top defensive teams in the nation. When they hold their opponents to those statistical categories that we've talked about right there, mm -hmm. they are 19-0, and undefeated. It's hard to score against this Kansas State team. What a beautiful alley-oop to Eliza Moppin. The athleticism of Maupin to go up and get that and not have to come down. That gives this Kansas State team a little different versatility in their ability to run their offense and their motion offense in a five-out setting, but also for transition defense and offense. She's going to be a catalyst for them in doing so. Zakaya Franklin for three. Got it. The lead that you've got to be aware of is her minutes are going to be limited, and so you've got to get the most and maximize the minutes that she's in the game, taking what the defense gives them. If you do put Lee in that high ball screen action, know that she's going to run a sagging tight defense and be ready to pull off the screen. Walker goes into Lee. Lee hasn't scored yet. Missed two. And she misses again, 0 for 3, Aoka Lee here in the early going. Give a lot of credit to Jackson. Uh, she has just been solid. And so has Samaya Nichols from the three-point line. Three different players have made a three-pointer so far for Kansas. Lee tries to bury Jackson deeper, and Jackson flicks the ball away. Out front to Jackson, scores it. Jackson brings to this team her ability to run the floor. The only game they didn't win was the first game of Big 12 play against West Virginia. And they've won the home game in this matchup with Kansas State the last three years in a row. The energy, though, that's in this building today is electric and... The Kansas team has really bought into what the game plan has been for them to establish themselves. And right now, one way to establish Kansas State is to go inside. Draws Kansas State within nine. Samaya Nichols going to work. A few 
uses the screen, ducks under. Two players go to the floor, but both Sanchez and Nichols get up. Sides for three. That's her specialty. Jackson. Just a little bit out of her range, probably, as Kansas State pushes ahead. Sanchez from just inside the three-point line. We talked about the ability to knock down the three ball, and right now, Kansas State is answering the call. They're two of three from the three. The last two possessions, they've been two for two from the three-point line. That's a quick way to get yourself back into this game. Aoka Lee read that perfectly. The hesitation there, and then she didn't go for it, and she just came over. Good rotation. Samaya so Nichols spinning, spinning, banks it in. Nichols now in nine points, Nikki. Well, Nichols is a player that loves to play through contact. She's actually inviting the contact here and able to score the basketball. So after the timeout by Jeff Mitty, Kansas State has made three of their last three. They had Aoka Lee inside, Terrence, Terrence Sides hit a three. Foul called inside, was that on Jackson? That was on Jackson, right there. You can see that Kansas State was getting ready to run their overload action where they bring all players to eliminate any help side so they can look for Lee inside. But what Kansas did was they forced the entry pass really, really far out past the three-point line. And a nice inbounds pass. Jackson had to go to the bench with a foul. Papa Dipulu in and and Aoka Lee shot right over her at the end of the quarter. Is Mayberry who comes up just short. What a first quarter of play. Oh, I would want them to understand the NIL, uh, the, the, the portal, uh, digital uh, digital rights. Uh, it's, it's a lot coming down the pike that they're going to have to be aware of. So it's a total game. As we start the second quarter of play, this was our opportunity to really honor you because there's been a lot of talk about Caitlin Clark breaking the all-time NCAA record, and that's a tremendous achievement in and of itself. But you actually still hold the all-time Division I scoring record in women's basketball because you played in the AIAW era before the NCAA. It's not so much what I want the people to know. I want NCAA governing body to know. Uh, that they should respect the players, uh, they should respect the history, include us um, and our accomplishments. Uh, you know, this is the era of diversity, equity, and inclusion. They should include us. Uh, we deserve it. And uh, I just love to see the fight. So it's going to be a great game. It's going to go to the end. I think so, I guarantee too. you. Ayoka Lee scores inside. She's a tremendous scorer as well. Well, and you're one of the greatest when you think about being a four-time All-American here at AU. We saw your jersey hanging in the Raptors. And then, obviously, you played at a time when there was no three-point line. Yeah. yeah. So you, <laughs> it was coast-to-coast -coast hooping. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just to score 3,649 points during your four-year career here. Obviously, we are honored to have you here, sitting here today. But also, you represented our country in the 1984 Olympics as a, uh, in Los Angeles as a gold medal winner. Mm -hmm. You've done it all, too. So as we talk about and give Mary and her flowers, we also need to give you yours. Well, I thank you. And, uh, you know, we all have to stand on the shoulders of, of, of someone else. And, uh, you know, I, had, I want to just mention my great teammates. That's the best part of college to me. You got lifelong... Uh, Friends, you got Adrian Mitchell, All-American, that I had the opportunity to stand on the shoulders of. I remember when my parents were in the stands uh, when I broke the scoring record, and you know that's something I always have in my heart. Well, we are so honored to be joined by you. We want to celebrate your career scoring record has lasted for 43 years. It's possible that it might get broken in the next few games. And what would you want to say to Caitlin Clark about that? Hey, congratulations. Welcome to the party. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lynette. Uh, thank you for having me. You bet. Absolutely. Appreciate it so much. Absolutely. Kansas State down by one with Serena Sundell out at the top of the key. Mop and spinning. She scores 
inside and one opportunity for she catches outside the lane here and you can see the first step is real quick with the spin move didn't necessarily call the contact for the and one play but here's another offensive rebound by kansas state gabby gregory with the offensive board the game the game is typically a game of runs and right now you can see that Kansas is struggling offensively on ESPN2. Boy, this is going to be a great one. Number 11, Colorado squaring off with number 12, UCLA. Coverage begins at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Charlie Cream currently has both those teams projected as number three seeds in the NCAA tournament. Both free throws made by Gregory, Kansas State. They were down by as many as 11 points early in this game as Kansas jumped out to a 17-6 lead. Kansas State has come back even with Aoka Lee in and out of the game, Nikki. The rhythm of the game right now is playing in Kansas State's favor. And right now, they're not only scoring the ball in the paint, they're also scoring it from the outside. Right now, Kansas State's defense has really done a nice job of disrupting Kansas' offense. They're only shooting 10% in the second quarter. They've only scored three points here. So now you're allowing your offense to dictate your defense, and that's the last thing that you want your players to do. You mentioned Samaya Nichols from Overland Park, Kansas. She grew up watching the Lynette Woodards of the world, and so when you're able to come in and put that jersey on. You're representing something more than just yourself. You're representing the institution. You're representing the community that you come from. Just coming down Kansas Highway 10 over from Oklahoma. Skyler Hill, the junior that transferred from North Alabama. A lot of things going on. Caitlin Clark is actually playing right now for Iowa. And uh, a lot going on. Boy, South Carolina. Continuing to roll, they wrapped up a share of the SEC title. A great Big 12 games yesterday as Serena Sundell stays with it and scores. All right, if they tip the ball, let it drop because they didn't see any reason to call the double dribble there. And Sundell just stayed aggressive in that play action, and that was really good. What a big screen right there. And again, the ball screen action that Kansas should continue to run because the way that the post players for Kansas State is playing that, they're sagging off. So if you can set those screens a little bit deeper for Kansas, they then can be able to pull up well, at any time that you're playing against your in-state rival. You have to have players that are wanting to step up and play. Aoka Lee missing on her second attempt there, even though Papa Dipulu had hit the deck. All the starters back in for Kansas except Tiana Jackson. Papa Dipulu out there at the top of the key. Glenn all over Nichols. Shot clock winding down. Franklin pass off to Papa Dipulu. Play action there, going inside. When, when Aoka Lee helped up, that allowed Papa the Pulu. Listen to me right now. <laughs> Papa the Pulu. Papa the Pulu you to it. get the put back, easy, or the put in right there because she was not guarded because the defender had rotated off. Glenn from the corner, rims in and out. And Kansas has a chance to tie it or take the lead here at the half. Again, don't leave any time left on the clock here. Run it down to the end. Get the shot that you want. Six seconds. Mayberry. Oh, stolen away by Glenn. Glenn pushing out in front. Does she have time? Does it count? It goes in. The officials wave it off. Aoka Lee leading the way for Kansas State with eight, but also Taryn Sides, the freshman, has eight points as well. Samaya so Nichols leads for KU. And keep in mind, when we were interviewing the Hall of Famer Lynette Woodard at the beginning of the second quarter, Tiana Jackson picked up her second foul, and so she only played eight minutes in the first half. The two centers are back both in the game going against each other to start the third quarter. Jackson did a really nice job at the beginning of the game also for this Kansas team of giving them transition baskets. She was running the ball, or running to the rim extremely hard when she was able to get from point A to point B. Aoka Lee getting bodied up by Jackson. No foul called here. 
I think that's a definitely a no call right there. Uh, you've got to have balance. And Aoka Lee right now is a player that wants the basketball. She's calling for the basketball, but she's also getting herself deep in the paint. So continue to watch this matchup between she and Jackson. Mayberry goes inside to Jackson. Jackson with a little nice left-handed stab hook. Comes up short, though. Jackson in the first half, four points, one rebound, a couple of block shots for Kansas before the foul trouble. Aoka Lee working inside. Look how deep she has Jackson buried. Mayberry, who has the ball, had her career high against Kansas State last year. She had a 26-point game against the Wildcats. She's got just three on a made three-pointer. I don't think that was the offensive uh, execution that Coach Schneider wanted them to run. He likes the ball to move around. He likes player movement, ball movement. Lee blocked by Jackson. And Lee is slow to get up, so the mismatch inside. Jackson on Gabby Gregory, and she's able to score. And then Gabby Gregory goes down hard. And a whistle is blown. Gabby Gregory is, is one that has been so solid for Kansas State. Not only a great scorer, but also someone who plays extremely hard on the defensive end of the basketball. She was all Big 12 first team last year when Aoka Lee was out for the season, the transfer from Oklahoma. This year she's averaging about nine points a game. I mentioned she's been dealing with a shoulder injury all year long so hopefully she gets back on the court lee had everybody buried but she kicks it out to glenn briley glenn with the three she was patient and was able to knock down and see her teammate and put the ball right there on the money briley glenn with her length making a, a difficult pass inside stole it away from mayberry Sanchez into the game, de being defended by Cruz Geeter. Sundell gets it maybe partially blocked by Jackson. Kurz Geeter into the front court, out to the corner to Franklin. No. That was going to be a critical possession for Kansas right now. The, they're down five. They need to get a, a defensive stop here. And look who they go inside to. They go inside to the player that has established herself, dominating in the paint. Aoka Lee again for two. 12 points now for Lee to go along with six rebounds as Jackson kind of got out of position and nobody was there to defend her. Nichols steps back. Ball screen from Lee. Little switch off. And then a turnover from Sanchez. Sanchez didn't read that right. I thought the defense, both of defenders left her. She probably had the open jumper, but forced the ball inside. But again, that high ball screen. Nichols scores off the ball screen. Kansas State got out to their biggest lead of the game, 37 to 30. Kansas on a little mini run of four to nothing. Sanchez pulls up and stops that run. Sanchez is one of those bigger guards and standing at 6-3, a freshman. Again, that dislocated finger has a bother. Oh. And Nichols has scored, I believe, on three straight possessions. Looked like Sanchez might have gotten away with a travel. Stays with it. Jackson with the rebound. And watch Jackson right now running to the rim. And she's beaten Lee down the floor, but Kansas didn't take advantage of it. Mayberry ties it! Again, this game is about runs and stops and who's going to want it more. And right now, both of these teams are showcasing what they do best. In transition, you've got Kansas that likes to rim run, but also they have spot-up shooters who can knock down the three. Right now, they are 5 of 11 from the three-point line. Briley Glenn made that shot along the baseline. We haven't had a stoppage of play for a while. We're due for a media timeout under five. How about Diana Jackson just decides to pull the trigger from 15? We discussed what a win for Kansas would mean. They're trying to get themselves into that NCAA tournament. A victory for Kansas State. Offensively, she has been a nightmare for, for K-State and continue to watch for her to elevate her game, especially when they're running the high ball screen action for her. 
Franklin is fouled by Terrence Sy. And they're doing so in the middle of the floor, so it's not allowing for there to be a lot of help. And this Nichols kid, she loves contact, mm. and as you can see she right sure there, does. the up and under. And she is a native of Overland Park, Kansas, went to Shawnee Mission West High School just last year. She misses the first free throw. Well, what an ESPN NBA Sunday doubleheader we have for you. It starts with Steph and the Warriors hosting the Nuggets at 7 Eastern. Then the Kings square off against the Clippers. Our coverage begins with NBA countdown at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific, as Nichols hits her second free throw to give the Jayhawks the lead. They led early in the first quarter by as many as 11. K-State came back and took the lead. They've held the lead, so this is just the second lead change of the game. But I think we might have a few more. There's one right there as Moppin scores inside. Really unselfish play. When you compare that to some of the greats in the Big 12, <laughs> the only other centers in Big 12 history that have those kind of numbers are Brittany Griner and Courtney Paris. Well, that's great company to be in, and that just tells you how dominant this young lady has been for Kansas State and to do so in a very tough conference as well. But when you're in the class and Brittany Griner, anytime you say Brittany Griner, that's greatness. Under 10 to go in the third quarter as K-State with a chance here to extend their lead and it gets tipped out of bounds by Holly Kurzgeter. Knocked away from behind, Sides throws it out. And that's the way the third quarter will end. And the officials blowing the whistle. So point five is what we have back on the clock. So a chance if they throw it the length of the court for Kansas. It's got to be a tip, but at this point. <laughs> and they decide not to. As we take a look at the scoring by quarter, talk about a great game. KU jumped out to the lead in the first quarter. K-State outscored them 15-9 to in the second quarter. That's really the difference. That was the difference of the game, and it started with sides. She came in and really gave them a spark off the bench. In that second quarter, she had five points. She was perfect from the field, two of two with one three-pointer. And then you had our best player inside in the post game. So a foul, an offensive foul called on Kansas, on Kurzgeber. Well, not the way you want to open up the fourth quarter if you're going to kind of try to regain the lead. Aoka Lee posting up Jackson Tuck. Rolls all the way around and in. Lee now with 14 points for K-State. Lee did a very nice job of timing up her duck in. The ball was moving around around the perimeter, which they want to spread it and run a four-out one-in offense. And then again, when you pick mm. up your defensive intensity, great things happen for you. Another, if you will, even though it's a jump ball, that's another turnover. So when you're trying to establish paint points and you have a player like Lee, the ball needs to see her, but she has to do the work early. She's got to time her duck in, and it, once the ball is reversed, there she mm. has the duck in. And again, Jackson has got to play smart. She's got to mix up. Keep being athletic. Use your athleticism when you're guarding a player like Lee. Don't let her touch you. For Kansas on the other side, they are a bubble team right now. Right now projected one of the last four teams in, but they've got incredible strength of schedule, which plays in their favor. They just need a couple of wins down the stretch here, I think, to get in as a blocking foul called on Case State. Still doesn't make the collision any less. No, right? it doesn't. It does not. <laughs> Samaya Nichols at the line. Leading scorer for the Jayhawks on the day with three players that are playing in their fifth year. She is the leading scorer on the year and today in this big rivalry game. She's got 18. That's just impressive for a freshman. And you look at Kansas roster. They lost seven players off of last year's team. They've got six newcomers with her being one of them. Another block shot from Tiana Jackson who continues to rack up the blocks. She's got seven block shots now, Jackson. Jackson has done a really nice job, again, of mixing up how she's guarding Lee. She's attacking the rim and or she's a shot blocker, but right here with the rotation, mm. it allowed her to get there to get that second and third opportunity on the offensive glass for Kansas. 
She's long, she's lanky, she's athletic. She's not only a shot blocker, but you can also switch her on the perimeter if need be. And Jackson has just done a phenomenal job defensively. She leads the Big 12 in block shots. She averages a double-double. She's not a great free throw shooter, but she made one of two there as she is about a 47% free throw shooter. But she ties the game up at 45. Nice baseline drive from Serena Sundell. She needs to go farther and farther into the corner is for them to get the pace going in their favor. Another miss. Quality shots may be at a premium here in the fourth quarter as the fatigue sets in, the rivalry, both teams trying to take away what each other does best. Nice backdoor cut and a beautiful pass from Ava Lee to set up Riley Glenn. The back door has been there all day for Kansas State, and they were able to execute it, but give Lee credit for recognizing it. Lee takes her time, blocked again from Jackson. Here come the Jayhawks. Jayhawks got numbers. Will they take advantage of it? They weren't able to do so. Mayberry has the right side of the paint, has it stripped by Sundell, and it will stay Kansas basketball with eight on the shot clock. This game is going to come down to possessions, time and possessions, and making sure that you're getting the quality shots that you want for your team. Nice high pass from the first meter for the tip in. We've had a couple of alley oops today. First meter now moving into fifth all time on the scoring list for Kansas. Abby Gregor, good to see her back in the game. She went down hard earlier in the second half. Sundell gets Cobbins up in the air and scores. Just real poise. Sundell has shown different ways that she can score the basketball. And averaging right at 12 points a game, four rebounds. She shoots 38% with a three-point line, so you've got to guard her. She can score mid-range, three-pointers, and obviously going to the paint. And the fans are getting into it. Great game here as we approach the four-minute mark remaining in the ball game. Well, this is an opportunity for Kansas to take advantage of the post action because Aoka Lee is out of the basketball game right now. Giving her a break. The ankle issue she's had this year. Gregory missing on that attempt. And Kansas with a chance to tie or take the lead. Nichols spins, ties it. Nichols, again, when you don't have Lee in the game, it eliminates the shot blocker. And so right now, you've got to get her back into the game immediately. That's 14 teams are in the top 100 in the net. And 10 different teams in the conference already have wins over top 25 teams. This is a tough conference, and it's tough to win on the road. Kansas State has been great today. Kansas needs a win here to get off the bubble if they can, and they stop Aoka Lee from a shot there. That's one that Lee knows that that should have went in, but when we were discussing different ways that you play Aoka Lee, you have to mix it up. You can't just sit behind her. You've got to keep moving your feet, and Jackson has done a tremendous job of doing just that. Holly Kerskeeter gets the handoff, looking for somebody. Kansas, three of their last three from the floor. They need to get this one up. Now, on their last four, and Kansas takes the lead. Again, the patience of this Kansas team to really run their play action and get what they want, and they've done a nice job. And right now, Kansas State needs to go and get a quick basket. And it gets away from Lee. Sundell pulls up, and Jackson commits the foul. Again, that was a loose ball, a 50-50 ball that could have went either way. But you like what K-State is doing as, the pause, as far as establishing Lee. Number 11, Baylor squares off against TCU. Both are also available on the ESPN app.
as Sundell makes one, misses one, and Kansas still leads by one. Kansas four for their last four from the field. Nichols sizing up. Lee steps right by her for the score. Nichols has just been unbelievable, but they got the mismatch that they wanted. Sundell looking for a lead of roll, and Jackson tips it away. I believe they're going to call that on Franklin on the floor. She's just taking her time and picking her poison. If you go underneath it, she's going to pull up. If she gets the switch, obviously we saw her utilizing her footwork with the up and under. Very smart play. And out of the timeout, Sundell misses, and Jackson secures the rebound. She's got 11 points, 6 rebounds, and 8 block shots. She's nearing a triple-double today. We talked about the second quarter, which was a great quarter for K-State. Well, that had a lot to do with the fact that Jackson was out of the game. Makes a big difference for Kansas. Nichols again gets the ball screen, measures up against Glenn, throws it up, no foul called, and we got a minute to play in this game. Sundell cut off, Kurzgeter steals it, and Kurzgeter going to pull up and use some time. Glenn picks up the foul, and Jeff Mitty said, we didn't need a foul there. 49.7 seconds to go. Now you're putting her at the line, and this could now becomes a two-possession game. Again, understanding time and possession. I mean, the only thing that helps is it doesn't allow Kansas to use the full shot clock, but it does put Kurzgeter, a terrific three-point shooter. Well, if you get the defensive stop, which is what you would hope that your team would be able to do. That would still allow you to have a full possession, if you will, to come down and run the play action. You could have went and got a quick two, or you could have went and said, hey, I got a good look at a three-point at a three point shot as well. So it's a two-possession game now, and a foul called on Cobbins, but that's just the fourth team foul. You've got a 13-second difference, so you still won't have to foul. K-State only has one timeout left, so they have to be careful about how they use their timeouts. Sundell stopped by Jackson. Glenn, top of the key. Strong. Jackson rebounds it. Now you have to foul. Immediately, you have to go and foul the basketball. And the foul is committed, and these fans in Allen Fieldhouse smell a victory. It's within their grasp. Thought that she didn't have inside position, but her length and her athleticism just went up and got it. Holly Kurzgeter now in double figures for Kansas. A 73% free throw shooter. Misses the second, but it's still a six-point game. Kansas State calls their last timeout. Kansas State down to six here with the ball, but it's punched away by Holly Kurzgeter. And she steps out of bounds. So they're saying they're going to review it. Her Jayhawks made that, that record may be broken in the next couple of games by Caitlin Clark, but she still owns that record. For a record to stand the time for over four decades. Congratulations, Caitlin Clark. <laughs> Taryn Sides dials up the three. Got it. It's a three-point game with 12.1 seconds remaining. That's why Taryn Sides. Neither team has fouls to give, and the possession arrow is in favor of Kansas State. So if Kansas State ties them up, they would get the possession. And initially, that's what you would think to do initially. But if not, if you can't tie her up immediately, then right there, that's a tie-up. There's the jump ball right there. And they got it. They got the tie-up the sideline and that means it's K-State basketball. K-State does not have any timeouts left but they did exactly the right thing. Well one thing that you don't want to do is catch the ball and tow the sideline and that gives them the perfect opportunity to do so. And in this possession your teammate right there you didn't have anything so there could have been a timeout called by Kansas at that point. Kansas State has a chance here to tie the game. Holly Kurskeeter got a hand on it. Terrence Sides fires it up. 